Now, one of the most slept on things when you have a business is building your business credit. And I don't see a lot of businesses doing this. Allowing yourself to build business credit can allow you to expand your business, do a lot more with your business, get more inventory. The sky is the limit. So in today's video, I'm going to be talking about how you can build business credit in less than 30 days without having to go to any vendors or third party people to help you do it yourself. What's up? I'm Brandon Young. I have taught hundreds of people how to make, save, and invest money through real estate, crypto, stocks. So if you're new here, consider subscribing and don't forget to hit that bell so you don't miss a beat. All right, let's get straight into the information. So the first thing that we have on this list is you want to know your business structure, your business entity. So this is going to be LLC, S Corp. It's going to be one of those following. So regarding the entity, I see majority of people using an LLC, but this is going to be different depending on what type of business you have. But just note that a sole proprietorship does not count. You won't probably be able to do this under a sole proprietorship, but every single other entity, you'll be able to use that. Now, once you've chosen your business entity, the next step will be for you to go ahead and register your business. So you're gonna go ahead and get your business name, you're going to have your entity in place, and once you've done that, you should be all set. Now there's many websites out there that allow you to create a business entity as well as register your business. Some websites are LegalZoom, Zen Business, just to name a couple, but there are a lot of different websites that allow you to do this. So go ahead and search, do your research and see which one is the best one for you. Now step number two is you're gonna wanna obtain your EIN number. Now think of your EIN number as a social security number for your business. This kind of tells the story behind your business, kind of gives your business a unique identifier as if a social security number would give you a unique identifier for you as a person. So if you decide to create your business on maybe LegalZoom or Zen Business, I know they usually have a feature that they give you the EIN number, but it's not necessary to use LegalZoom or Zen Business to get the EIN. You can get it yourself on the IRS website, and you can usually do this by using the IRS assistance tool. If you wanna see a separate video on how to do that, I can make it, but just do some research. You don't necessarily have to pay for EIN. It's something that you can get for free. One thing I do wanna mention is is this EIN number is very important because it's gonna allow you to open up different business accounts. This can be bank accounts as well as most of the time when you try to get a net 30 is that which is something we're gonna talk about later in the video. But if you wanna open up like accounts where you're buying things from vendors, usually they may ask you for an EIN number as well as when you go to banks to open up a checking account, savings account for your business, they're gonna ask you for these EIN numbers and etc etc all right next step on this list is you want to get something that is called a dunn and bradstreet number so when it comes to personal credit we tend to use three companies and that is called equifax experian and transunion but when it comes to businesses one of the most reputable companies that is used is something called dunn and bradstreet dunn and bradstreet's main goal is to offer information based off of credit from businesses that's what they do they do credit reporting for business so you're gonna get what is called a Dunn's number from Dunn and Bradstreet and it is used to generate a bunch of reports, multiple reports for different businesses all around the world. Now there's no cost associated with getting this Dunn's number. It's absolutely free. You just go on their website and you register your actual business and they will give you a Dunn's number. Now they're gonna have additional services and stuff like reporting or they try to get you reported very quick, but I found like that doesn't really work too well uh, you pay a lot of money to do it and it doesn't necessarily do that well so honestly you can leave that out of the equation you don't need to do that part but the most important part is you do get that Dunn's number now the next step that you want to do is you want to open up a business bank account now some of the factors to why you want to open up a business bank account is one you don't want to co-mingle your regular personal funds with your business funds two it's gonna play a vital role into the credit application process because when you try to apply for credit for your business it has to be from your business bank account it can't be from your personal bank account also having a business bank account is going to provide key data for any of your lenders when it comes to funding now step five we're going to start establishing credit 
with some creditors. Now, one of the easiest ways to build credit is to apply for something called net accounts with certain suppliers. So when it comes to net terms, for example, let's say if they give you a net 15 or a net 30. For a net 15, essentially you will pick the items that you wanna buy. You can go ahead and buy it on a credit, but you're basically telling the supplier that, hey, I'm going to get this as a credit from you, but I'm going to pay this back within 15 days, 30 days. So if it's a net 15, you have to pay that within 15 days, net 30, it's gonna be 30 days, etc., cetera, et cetera. And what happens is every single time that you pay that credit off or you pay that net 15, net 30, that information goes ahead and it gets reported to Dun and Bradstreet and all the other credit agencies and your number or your the credit score for your business, it goes up. Now some of the easiest vendors to get involved with is gonna be Uline, it's gonna be Quill, and there's gonna be Granger. I'll leave the links to all of them in the description down below. But essentially, uh, when you're first starting with the business credit for these specific vendors, they're not gonna automatically let you do the net 30 account. You're going to have to buy something regularly. And as you build up trust, you can then go ahead and apply for the net of 30 account. You may have to email them or you can go into their chat option and ask them about applying for that. Ultimately, you want to make sure when you're applying for these accounts, you are applying through your business name, the EIN number, all that information is what you're displaying and it's not your personal information because you want to make sure that it's reporting to your business and not to your personal. When you finally get accepted for these accounts, make sure that you're paying it off immediately. You're not waiting for it to get to these terms like the 30 or the 15. As soon as you buy it, I would just go ahead and just pay it off so you don't have to worry about it and you continually start to build up that credit because that's what's important. Next step is you want to monitor what is going on with your business credit. Now it's honestly important to make sure you're monitoring what is going on with your business credit so you know whether it is actually being reported and your score is going up or maybe if you need to go ahead and make more accounts with suppliers, get more net 30 accounts. It's just good to see what exactly is going on. One website that I found that is pretty good with you being able to see what actually is going on and it doesn't charge you is nav.com. So it's nav.com and they don't charge you to look at your actual business credit information, which is awesome. Like all these other websites, they'll charge you monthly or they'll do a yearly subscription. But for nav, you can pretty much see it for free. So you want to be on a steady lookout to see exactly what's going on on a daily basis, making sure that things are getting paid on time and you can see what exactly is going on with your score. So once you've established some trade lines, which you've already have with Quill, Granger, Uline, and you've used that, you're using the net 30 terms and you're paying it off on time, you should start to slowly see your business credit score grow. And now with that happening, now you can try to apply for different credit, uh, different loans, depending on how much your business credit score has grown. Now, honestly, this is something that can take over maybe a month or three months, but if you can do everything very quickly and get it set up, and once you've done it the first time, maybe if you start another business, you can get it started even quicker and you know exactly what steps to take to do this. I was able to start building it in about two weeks or so. For everybody, it's gonna be a little different, but ultimately, you can do it. I believe in you. If you have any questions or concerns or maybe you wanna add to this list, be sure to go and leave a comment down below. I'm Brandon Young. I'll see you in my next video. Peace.